All right, let's talk this design, shall we? So I base this pattern off of my Eli laptop case pattern. And the beauty of this pattern is that it's not just for laptops. It is a retractable pattern piece, or you can use math and there's an equation in the pattern, or you could actually print out the pattern pieces and they're retractable to custom fit any rectangular item that you need a, a case for that is less than one inch thick. So the pressing mat, the cutting mat all fit that criteria. So I just use this uh, formula to come with the custom size for my little travel cutting pressing stage. Now the question on everybody's mind is what the heck is a retractable pattern piece? So if you're unfamiliar with my Eli laptop case, this is the printable pattern piece that comes with the pattern. And before you cut anything out or tape anything together, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay these pattern pieces out in front of you, lining up all of the straight lines and the edges of the paper. So we're working within the limitations of a printer, so it obviously doesn't go all the way to the edge of the paper, but you can pretty much eyeball it that it's continuing in that straight line. And you want one, two, three, four. So starting with this orientation, you're gonna take the rectangle object that you need custom fit, and you're gonna lay the bottom corners into each of these L brackets on all four corners. So for example, my mat here, I'm gonna drop it in this left-hand corner here. And then I am going to position all of the pattern pieces are gonna move underneath pattern piece three. Okay, so we start in this bottom corner, then I'm gonna take this top piece and I'm gonna slide it underneath page three so that the top edge can sit in that little L bracket. So here we go. So this is top sitting there, this bottom is sitting in this piece. We're keeping up these edges lined up and now we're gonna move this piece again underneath all of them. so that the right hand upper corner is still in that little L bracket and the bottom edge. All right, so doing our best to keep these lined up and our device within these corners, now we have created our main body piece along the bottom and the spine accent. So now you're gonna tape these all together, then cut along this line for your main, main body piece, and then you're gonna cut along this top edge to create your spine accent. Now, if you're using a piece that's much, a mat that's much bigger than this, then obviously it's gonna, your paper are gonna expand too far and there's gonna be gaps in the channel. That's why I did include a formula within the pattern so you can just do the math portion and not bother with printing these paper sheets, and you can just cut by measurements with the quilting ruler and rotary cutter. Now, for the most part, I made this as I've written for it in my pattern. The only th difference is that for the laptop case, you're covering, you know, an electronic device. So it calls for foam inside to protect that. This doesn't need any foam in it because it's a pressing mat and it's like um, cutting mat. It does not need foam. So I just put fusible fleece. Uh, on the exterior portion and then just a, um, used a water resistant canvas for the interior so it didn't need any additional foam or interfacing in that way. You'll notice the obvious change is the handle on the top spine in the pattern. I've switched it to more of this style and I will show you that in just a moment why I made those changes. Um, but also in the pattern, this um, grab handle serves to tack the zipper inside here so um, that is why I ended up doing a decorative stitch along this bottom because these stitches are actually tacking the end of the zipper inside so you don't have this tail sticking out. Uh, personal preference if you don't mind the tail go for it but I think that this gives it a nice finished clean edge. So let's open it up and I will talk about these handles and why I moved them to this orientation. So when you open up your pressing station here you want it to lay flat, right? You don't want a big bump in the center here to interfere with the pressing mat or the cutting mat. So that's why I moved the handles out so I could um, sew them in this orientation and it doesn't interfere with the back portion of the cutting mat. Also, I did not add any exterior pockets as you'll see, because again, I need this to open and lay flat. And the obvious question, can you just take your stuff out? 
and move the bag out of the way and have your pressing and cutting station just like this? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no reason why you can't do that. But um, I liked the idea of keeping it in my bag for if you're in between classes or you're going somewhere and you want just quick grab and go, fold up, easy cleanup. Also, the next thing I want to discuss is that this is a 12 by 18 pressing mat and they come in different sizes. So it doesn't have to be just this size. You can find any pressing size. I think they have those little guys and a cutting mat to match. You can make it a really small travel size. But the thing to keep in mind, and that should be obvious to most people, and particularly was not obvious to me, I think I just got too excited and ex caught up in the moment that I thought, oh, a 12 by 18 cutting pressing mat, just buy a 12 by 18 cutting mat. Well, as you can see, this one is only 17 inches because you have to account for the border and I had made my bag based off of the pressing mat, which I already had, and then I ordered my cutting mat. Well, look at when you order a 12 by 18 cutting mat, <laughs> it's actually quite bigger because you have to account for these, um, these edges that I didn't even think about. And I'm kicking myself that it seems so obvious now, but I wasn't thinking about it. So luckily I was able to find some off brand that had a smaller mat that I could still use my bag. But if you are doing the 12 by 18 size, I would encourage you to do the math off of the cutting mat, not so much the pressing mat. Now, for those of you who will want specifics of how the changes I did for this particular bag, I cut each of these handles exactly 36 inches long. And then I marked the center here and I folded it over on itself 12 inches from that center. So this is just folded over and I sew in between this edge um, the 12 inches. Then I will position this on the whole pattern piece just like this. Before we add our spine accent we have to add these straps. So I measured a five inch in between them to accommodate my logo here. So from the inside of this edge to the inside of this edge is five inches. And then I just um, lined them up the, the bottom here and used a strip of double-sided tape down the centers, sewed up one side, stopping two inches from this top edge. And then I came over and I did a one inch box on both sides, a one inch X box. And then I came back down here and then you repeat the same thing on both ends. Then you add the strap accent as as written in the pattern. Now, that's the only change for this exterior as far as the interior goes. I did add the little corner anchor pieces for the mat side and I left this blank because I just planned to let my um, pressing mat sit there. If there are any other specific questions that I didn't cover that you've noticed I've done differently, just drop them in the comment section below and I will get to those. When it comes to this bottom decorative edging, like I said, I just took it all the way across, but really you only need to just tack it, you know, an inch in to keep that zipper tape from pulling out on the edge. And then you may want to do it on this side just for symmetry purposes and then it looks not odd. Um, all strictly personal preference.